Hi there and welcome to the History Teacher. This revision video covers Weimar and Nazi Germany from the GCSE Edexcel 9 to 1 course. Hopefully you'll also find it useful if you're studying any of the other exam boards or if, like me, you just love history. You can now become a member to support me to continue making this content from just £1 a month. Plus you'll get exclusive access to worksheets, revision materials and you'll get to vote on forthcoming episodes. The link is in the description. Hi there guys, it's a bit of a long one this week because we're going to be taking a look at question 3a on paper 3. This question carries 8 marks and is part of a series of 4 questions on the same topic in your exam. You should be aiming to answer this in about 15 minutes. I'm going to be walking through all of the questions from the same series so you can see how this all fits together over the next few weeks. This question is focused on AO3 which asks you to analyse, evaluate and use sources contemporary to the period to make judgments in the context of historical events. This question includes two sources from the time, one of them may be visual but at least one will be written and you need to assess the usefulness of both sources for the inquiry in the question and apply your knowledge of the event. So let's start by looking at a question and looking for those clues that are going to help us to get the best marks. So here's our question and the first thing we know is it's asking how useful. This means that you're going to have to make a judgment about how good the sources are at informing you about the focus of the question. Note the focus of the question here. We need to be laser focused on this because the mark scheme tells us that to get a level 2 or 3 answer we need to give judgments for the specified inquiry. It then asks you to explain, in other words give reasons for your answer and tells you that you need to use sources B and C and your own knowledge. So you must use all of these. You will find sources B and C in the sources and interpretations booklet which you are given separately. This is useful to us because it means that we can have the sources in front of us the whole time we are writing. I'm going to use COP to structure this answer. This stands for content, own knowledge and provenance. This gives you the best chance of getting a level 3 answer because the mark scheme says the sources are analysed to support reasoning about their utility which means you've looked in detail at the source to make your own judgement and this is our content section. The next bit of the mark scheme we need to consider is where it says contextual knowledge is used and this is where we're going to deploy our own knowledge to help us judge how useful the source is and finally the mark scheme asks for developed reasoning which takes into account how the provenance affects the usefulness of the source content which is where the provenance part of COP comes in. Provenance is quite simply the nature, origin and purpose of the source so we need to consider what it is, who and where it came from and why it was made. So let's get cracking with our first assessment of the sources so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. I've chosen a question with a picture and a written source so I can talk you through both but sometimes you will only get written sources. Source B is a photograph and there's quite a lot of information in the caption which is going to help us. It tells us the photo is of the Kapp Putsch in 1922 and it shows soldiers occupying Berlin near to the Reichstag. So this is really useful. It tells us exactly what the picture shows and tells us our answer is going to focus on the Kapp Putsch. I'm going to highlight a couple of those phrases to remind me why I'm writing my essay. I'm also going to annotate the picture because there are a couple of things I think are important. Firstly, the soldiers are really well armed. There's a large gun in the middle and the men are armed with World War One grenades. I'm going to make some inferences from that in my answer. Secondly, I have spotted that the people in the background seem to be going about their daily business and they're not paying the men any attention. And finally, the men are not fighting. They're just standing around with their hands in their pockets. So that's all I'm going to highlight because I don't have all that long to write my answer. So I only want to focus on two or three key things. So now I've annotated my source, I can begin my first answer. For the content section, I'm just drawing the examiner's attention to the parts of the source I'm going to analyse. So I've written, a source B is useful because it is a photograph of the free corpse near to the Reichstag. The source shows they are heavily armed with a large gun and the men have World War I grenades on their belts. It also shows people in the background who appear to be going about their normal lives. The men are not fighting but are stood around with their hands in their pockets. So there's nothing difficult here but I now need to back up what is happening in the source with my own knowledge. Remember in the mark scheme it said contextual knowledge is used? Well there is a bit more to it than that. In the process of interpreting the sources and applying criteria for judgments on their utility. So it's not going to be enough to just say what you know about this event. You've got to link it to the source. So I have written 
This is useful because it agrees with what I know about the Cat Putsch. The Free Corps were ex-army soldiers, so many would have had access to weapons they had used in the war, which explains how they have grenades and large guns. The Free Corps were a voluntary force taken from the army who had been set up to put down the Spartacist uprising. However, under the direction of Wolfgang Cap, a right-wing journalist, they staged their own coup on the 15th of March 1920. There was no military resistance to the Putsch in Berlin, which fits with the image of the men standing around with their hands in their pockets. However, the putsch was put down after a few days by a general strike called by the government. The image is useful because it suggests the cat putsch was a serious challenge for the Weimar government because the soldiers were well armed and unopposed. So note a few important things I've said here. Firstly, I've clearly linked what I know to the source, where I've said this explains and which fits with. Next, I've given a sentence or two to show the examiner I have specific knowledge of this event. And last of all, I've made a mini judgment about how useful the source is based on the content and why. So finally, we get onto the provenance part of COP. To make a good judgment on this, you really need to think carefully about the motivations of the author. In this context, the image of a photograph which appeared in a newspaper at the time of the putsch. The photo was obviously taken for a reason, and it appears in a newspaper, which tells us that the photo is important in some way. So why do photos appear in newspapers? Well, it's usually to illustrate the story that is being told, so we can safely assume that there was an article about the cat putsch in the newspaper, which suggests it was considered to be important news at the time. We can also assume that this photo was considered to be representative of what was happening. Another thing we need to think about is how the cat putsch was written about in the paper. Was it a positive, suggesting the newspaper was right-wing and supported the putsch? Or was it negative, suggesting that the newspaper was left-wing and opposed to the putsch? We can't really tell from the image alone, but we can acknowledge the importance of this in our answer. So I've written, this is a useful source because it is a photograph which gives us a clear idea of what was actually happening in that place in Berlin. Berlin. It was made for a newspaper, which is useful because it gives us an idea of what was important in the news that week. However, it should be borne in mind that we don't know whether the newspaper was trying to show the cat putsch in a positive or negative light because the country was divided by left and right politics in 1920. If they're trying to show it as a positive, they may have chosen a photo which made the putsch look less threatening. You can see clearly I've talked about the nature, origin and purpose of the source in this and used it to make a judgment. So let's have a look at source C so we can practice this skill. I've included my model answer and a practice worksheet for you in the description so you can follow along. And again, I'm going to briefly annotate the source to give me some reminders. The caption is again useful to us because it tells us that this is the account of someone who lived in Germany during hyperinflation and she is giving an interview in 1974 which is 50 years after hyperinflation. In the source, she gives us three clear points. She talks about the rapid rise in the cost of goods, the effect on people with savings, and how this affected people's trust in the government. I'm going to jump straight in with my content. Source C is also very useful because it is in the personal account of the effect of hyperinflation on ordinary people in 1923. In the account, the lady describes how goods were rising in value so quickly that money had to be spent immediately. She also describes how people lost their savings and describes the frustrations of ordinary people and how they lost their trust in the government. Here, I'm just summarizing what the source says and I'm going to link it to my own knowledge now. This is useful because it agrees with my own knowledge. In 1923, the German economy collapsed and hyperinflation set in. The cost of a loaf of bread rose from one mark in 1919 to 200,000 million marks by the end of 1923. This fits in with the source because it mentions the speed of the increase in prices. The source also mentions people losing their savings, and I know that this was a big source of anger against the Weimar Republic, because even after Stresemann had fixed the economy, people never got their savings back. It also shows that people didn't trust the government anymore, which was reflected in the uprisings and protests in 1923. This shows that hyperinflation was a serious challenge for the Weimar Republic. Again, you can see I'm using specific knowledge to back up what the source says, and I'm linking it to the source and making that mini judgment at the end. Finally, we come to the provenance again. This time it's from an interview with someone who was there at the time, so that's really useful to us because it's a first-hand account. But the woman was interviewed 50 years later, so we need to take this into account. She may remember the events differently over time. Additionally, we need to remember that this is just one one person's account. We know that different people experienced hyperinflation in different ways. So I'm going to include that in my assessment of the source. I've written, this is a very useful source because the woman was living in Germany at the time of hyperinflation. So it's a first-hand account. It's also useful because it's from an interview in 1974, which means the woman remembered the events clearly. 
However, we should be careful because this is only one person's memory from a long time ago and may not represent everyone's experience because some people, for example farmers, profited from the high food prices. You can see here that I've given some positives to the source but I've also backed up my negative with a short piece of own knowledge. A couple of last things to point out about this question. Firstly, you don't need to compare the sources or write a conclusion. Each source needs its own paragraph and needs to be dealt with separately. Most importantly, this question is really limited in the amount of time you have to do it in. So you should practice this question as much as you can, especially as it also appears in paper one. This way you'll train yourself to think about the sources critically and you will speed up as you get more practice. Okay, that is everything you need to know about question 3a on paper three. Don't forget that there are worksheets and my contact details in the description if you have any questions. Now for a quick word from my other half and I will see you next time. History teacher's SO here. She's given up work and is living off her savings to make these videos full time. Unfortunately, savings don't last forever. So we're asking for your help. If you can spare any money to help her keep making these videos, please visit the buy me a coffee link in the description and give what you can. That said, we know these are difficult times. You might not have any money to spare, but you can still help. Like, comment and subscribe for the algorithm, but also spread the word. Tell your friends, colleagues and anyone you think might be interested. Thanks.